Okay, in this lesson, what we are going to do is explore quadratic functions, and as you can see here uh, at the top, it says we're going to explore it with a graphing calculator. So if you're in my class, uh, you should probably have a graphing calculator out in front of you, and if you don't, you may want to pause this video and come and grab one. Uh, we'll also be showing you how to do some of this some of these calculations and some of these uh, characteristics on a different program but uh, you are going to want to practice along on this graphing calculator and pause this video regularly in order to make sure that you understand how to find these different characteristics of a quadratic function. Uh, now on the top here highlighted in green is the function we're going to investigate. So it says graph the function y is equal to 1 half x squared plus 4x plus 2. Using the graphing calculator, determine the coordinates of the vertex, the x-intercepts, and the y-intercept. Now if you're in my class and have your study guide out, uh, the study guide actually gives you screenshots regularly and tells you exactly what to do. So you don't actually need this uh, video lesson in order to, to find out these various things, but I am going to show you. Uh, so first of all it says uh, graphing. So step one, turn the calculator on and press the y equals button. If any functions are previously there, clear them. So here is, and if you're in my class, any of these underlined words are buttons that you're actually pressing on the calculator. So I'm turning it on. I'm pressing y equals, which is in the top row of your calculator right here. And I have no functions here. But if I did, let's say there was some sort of function there, I could just press clear and get rid of them all. Okay, so you want to make sure that they're all clear. Step two says enter the function into y1 equals. So the function that we're entering is 1 half x squared, and I'm just going to use decimals, so I'm going to put instead of 1 half, 0 0.5. x is this button here, and it even mentions that on your study guide uh, right here on the left-hand side. <clears throat> so here's x, and squared is this button right here on your calculator to the left, x squared, and then it's going to be plus... 4x and plus 2, it says. Okay, uh, step 3. As you can see, you can just follow step by step on your calculator. If you're making mistakes, you can ask me in class. Uh, here's your function. It says to view the graph, press graph. So here's graph. Now, not all of you will be saying the same thing that I'm seeing right here. In fact, this is not necessarily a good thing to be seeing. Um, on your screen. As you can see off to the left here, this is a good parabola uh, in order to, uh, a good parabola because we're seeing all the, the uh, important things. So what it also says is to standardize what you see because what I'm seeing on my graphing calculator is not the same as I'm seeing on a left hand window here. Uh, you may want to press zoom, which is this button here, and then six because that is zoom standard. What that does, so if I press six now, is I'm seeing exactly what I see to the left here as well. <clears throat> what that does is it makes the viewing screen from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x-axis and negative 10 to positive 10 on the y-axis. So that always, if you press zoom and then 6, it will always standardize your window, okay? which may or may not be helpful, which you'll see in the next lesson. Uh, we may have to adjust that window. All right, the first thing we're going to do is to calculate where the vertex is. Uh, the vertex in this particular case, on this function here, if you're looking at my graphing calculator, the vertex is on the bottom, which means uh, to calculate anything, we're going to go into calculate, which is the yellow function right above trace. So I'm going to press, as you can see here in your description, it says press second, then trace. So second, and then trace. There we go. And we would like to calculate a minimum because the uh, vertex is on the bottom. So I'm going to press three. Now it's saying left bound. What it wants is me to give the calculator a left boundary or any point that's to the left of the vertex. Uh, so as you can see in your study guide it says press the left arrow until the tracing bug is to the left of the vertex and press enter. So by doing this I'm just continually pressing left and you may want to pause this at some point in time until I'm at any point to the left of the vertex and then I'm hitting enter. Okay, So that is the first thing I'm doing. Next I'm going to go up to the top of the page so if you're in my class, you have the study guide out. Uh, step three says, press the right arrow until the trace bug is to the right of the vertex and press enter. So you should be seeing right boundary. <clears throat> so I'm going to keep pressing the right button here. And to the right and hit enter. And the next thing I see is guess. And what it says in your study guide for number four here is move the trace bug close to the vertex and press enter. So what we're doing is telling the calculator uh, that is between this point and this point. That's what left and right means. So we're guessing that the vertex is between those two points and we're pressing enter. 
okay? And your calculator is not an exact piece of machinery, but it's somewhat close. And we're seeing here by seeing 4.00002, that just means four, negative four and negative six is where your vertex is. As you can see, I've got a slightly different point down here on step five. I have negative 3.9999998 and negative six. So that's the same as negative four and negative six. So there's your vertex. <clears throat> Next is how do we calculate the x-intercepts? Well, the, another term for x-intercepts, so as you see here, step one for x-intercepts is zeros. So, <clears throat> because the output or the y-value is zero. So if I press second and then trace, you go to the calculate menu and press two, you will be calculating the zeros. So uh, if I press two, I'm calculating the zeros. And it's gonna ask me the same three questions. However, there are two x-intercepts, so we are going to have to do the following steps twice. I'm going to search for this x-intercept to the left here first. So if I want to go to the left of that x-intercept, I'm going to press left until I pass the x-intercept. So that would be to the left of the x-intercept. Hit enter. Okay. <clears throat> now it's going to ask me for a right boundary. As you can see here, I've, I've on your study guide, there's a step 2, a step 3, and a step 4. So step 3 is a right boundary, so go somewhere to the right of your x-intercept, hit enter, and then it asks for a guess, so it goes somewhere close to your x-intercept and hit enter. And what it's giving me here is my first x-intercept is negative 7.46. Or if you go to the top of the next column in your study guide, <clears throat> you will see step three was moving it to the right, step four was making a guess, and step five, here's your x-intercept and step five, the exact same value that I had calculated. That's one of your x-intercepts. Now your other x-intercept you're going to have to repeat, as you can see at the bottom of your second column uh, in your study guide. Repeat step two here. So I'm going to press second and then trace and then two again. And to find this x-intercept to the right, as you can see on the screen here, the left bound is below that x-intercept because that's a point that's to the left of the x-intercept. So here's to the left of that x-intercept. I'm going to hit enter. Or if you're looking in your study guide, uh, probably what you're looking at is right here, step six is telling you exactly where to go. So here's step two, that's to your left bound. I just hit enter. Step three, anywhere to the right of the x-intercept, hit enter. And step four, go close to the x-intercept, hit enter, and your calculator will calculate it. And that is negative 0.54 rounded. So as you can see on the calculator or in the study guide, you're getting the same value. So we've looked at how to calculate x-intercepts and the vertex. Now the y-intercept uh, is very easy to calculate because we can give this calculator, uh, this graphing calculator, any input value and get an output. And the input value of a y-intercept is zero because the value of x at a y-intercept is zero. So if I press second and then trace, as you can see here, we're, we're going to press one to calculate a value, so here's one. And finally it says since the y-intercept occurs when x equals zero, press zero and then enter. So I wanna know what y equals when x equals zero and y equals two, so there's my y-intercept. Just as a quick aside, uh, this graphing calculator is an ancient piece of machinery um, which we still use in our classrooms, unfortunately. But if you had the internet, you could quite easily go to desmos.com and put in the function. Here's the function that I've that we just calculated all these parts with, and it's far easier to find these things. But if you're in my class, you're going to also want to use the graphing calculator as another device. <clears throat> but if you're on desmos.com, here's your function, and look how easy it is to calculate those points. I just press close to them, and it actually tells me what they are. So there's one of your x-intercepts, here's your other x-intercept, here's your y or your vertex, and here is your y-intercept. So much easier uh, if you use desmos.com or any online resource to calculate these values because it's a newer technology. Uh, if you are in my class, what you're going to want to do next is um, an activity that's a little bit longer. You're going to be finding all of those different things with your graphing calculator. Do the following questions and get me to initial them for correctness. If you're having issues, please talk to me.